Hello everyone, today uh, I will show you an example about how to configure static routes and DHCP on Cisco routers. Now, in this scenario depicted here in this uh, figure, uh, you see uh, th two routers, RT1 and RT2. RT1 connects to three different gigabit Ethernet. Ethernet, so we have gigabit uh, 00, connects to LAN 172.16.00.24. The Gigabit01 interface connects to the second LAN, whose network address is 172.16.1.0/24, and the third interface, Gigabit0/2, connects to the third LAN, 172.16.2.1/0/30/30. Sorry. Uh, the second router here, RT2, connects to two Gigabit LAN, a Gigabit Ethernet LAN. So the first one is through the interface Gigabit01. Uh, we have uh, LAN 172.16.2.0/30, and the second LAN is connected through interface Gigabit00. Network address is 172.16.3.0/24. So this is the situation. So the first thing I will do is we have this host and hosts are configured as uh, will be configured as DHCP clients. So the should acquire IP address or they have to get IP address from the HCP server. The server here on network 172.16.3.0/24 is assigned with fixed or static IP address. So the first thing I will do, I will go to router RT1 and in this router RT1 I already pre-configured some parameters for example show IP interface brief and I can show you the IP addresses already configured to those interfaces like Gigabit 00, Gigabit Ethernet 00, Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1, Gigabit uh, Ethernet 0 slash 2. You see the IP addresses already configured and the status of the interfaces which are which is up. So all interfaces are in up uh, mode. Uh, <coughs> also I can show you the uh, routing table, show IP route and you notice here there is no yet there is no configured protocol, routing protocol yet, only uh, connected uh, routes. I can do, I will do similar thing with the second router. In the second router, uh, I will show you, show IP interface brief. So you see, these are the two interfaces, basically the gigabit uh, Ethernet 00, uh, which is up, okay, status is up, up. Uh, the, the interface itself is up, line protocol is up. And the gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1, uh, which is assigned with an IP address, static IP address, and it shows the status of the interface as being operational. So both uh, interface and line protocol are up. So uh, everything is working fine. I can show you also the routing table. Uh, there is no configured route, routing protocol, only connected routes. Only connected routes. All right. So the first thing I will do. I go to host one here, you see, it does not have any IP address yet. So even though I can go to command prompt and I type IP config, there is no IP address. So what I will do now, I will go to router RT1. And the first thing, I will configure RT1 as a DHCP server. So this is very simple. So the first thing I will do is IP DHCP uh, pool. I will uh, start configuring two pools one pool for each local area network. So the first pool, I, I call it my my pool one. And then <coughs> I go inside the pool, so I can see all the options available. So the first thing, I will show the range of IP addresses which can be dynamically assigned to the uh, first LAN, uh, 172.16.0.0, uh, and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So this pool here is going to uh, service this LAN here, LAN 172.16.0.0/24, because I'm specifying the network address here. Now for the default router, so each time computer is going to request an IP address from the HCP server, it can also request other parameters like default routes, DNS IP address, etc. But in this example, we're going to limit ourselves to default router. So for the default router, it will be the IP address of the interface of the router, which is connected to the same LAN. The IP address is 172.16.0.100. So after that, 
uh, we have no other option to configure. Okay, DNS server, we don't have DNS server, otherwise we can use this uh, option, DHCP uh, option. So after that, we're we are done. From here, I can go to, I can either exit or I can go to configure another DHCP pool. So I will call it my, my pool two, okay? And once I'm inside, I will configure this pool to service this LAN. This LAN will be 172.16, dot one dot zero so it would be one seventy two sixteen dot one dot zero the uh, subnet mask two five five two five five two five five dot zero and the default gateway will be one seventy two sixteen dot one dot one hundred in fact it will be the IP address of the interface of router which is connected to the LAN which is being serviced by this DHCP pool. Now after I'm done after I'm done. Okay, so I configured my pool of the ATP servers. Well, I can also do something. I can go here and I can see all the options under the ATP. For example, I already configured pool and excluded address. For example, these IP addresses are belong, belong to the uh, interface of router. So I don't want them to be considered inside the pool of IP address to be dynamically assigned to uh, the ATP client. So I can exclude them from that range. I will type this command IP uh, excluded and then I specify for example the IP address 172.16 you can specify either single IP address or a range of IP address so if it's range of IP address you will start with the um, with the first IP address and then you will end with let's say IP address like this so something like this so we are going to exclude let's say a range of uh, IP addresses from being assigned dynamically, for being able to be dynamically assigned to uh, LAN 172.16.0.0 slash 24. Okay, so we have done this. And I can do the same for the second LAN, this LAN here. So I just come here and change 0 to 1. So this will be, this range, this range, this range of IP address will be excluded from being dynamically assigned to any host on this LAN. So like this, uh, I can come back to, I can display show running and here I can see the configuration of my DHCP uh, server. So I have the range of excluded IP addresses and the pool of IP addresses which can be dynamically assigned to the DHCP client. Now, moment of truth, let's see if this works. So let's go to host1. Host1, we don't have any IP address. Then what I do, I will select DHCP which means I instruct host1 to contact the DHCP server and acquire IP address from the DHCP server and this is what happens in fact so uh, the transaction is successful the host one is able to acquire an IP address which is 172.16.0.1 subnet mask and default gateway so DHCP request has been successful now let me go to host 2 now in host 2 what we notice here let's configure it to be a DHCP client same thing host was able to acquire IP address 172.16.0.2 with subnet mask with default gateway. Great. Now let's have a look at the host on the second LAN. Now, DHCP, configure this host as DHCP client. Yes, it works also. It's getting an IP address from the DHCP server 172.16.1.1, subnet mask, default gateway, and host 4. Same thing here. I'm going to configure the DHCP server and it, see, it shows that host 4 was successful in requesting an IP address from the DHCP server. Now, the point is like this. If we go to router 1, we know that there are two pools of IP addresses. How can it decide that these IP addresses will go through this interface and these IP addresses will go through this interface? In fact, it's very simple. Uh, the router is going to look at the uh, IP address of each interface. So, for example, uh, the router is going to look at this IP address here. The interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 has the following IP address 172.16.0.100 and the following subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Now, uh, it will extract the network address which is 172.16.0. So, this is network address. And then it's going to use the same thing. And then it will recognize this pool of IP addresses, this pool of uh, IP address 172.16.0. 
as the pool that should service the network connected through interface gigabit ethernet 00 and the same thing should happen through the other interface now in this interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 we have the ip address 172.16.1.100 with a subnet mask 255.255.255.0 it means that the network address is this one 172.16.1 172.16.1 so let's go now to the pool of ip address which has the same network address this is it 172.16.1 of course with the same subnet mask so now the router understand that the pool my pool 2 should service the LAN which is connected through uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 so it's very important to understand that whenever you configure a pool of uh, IP addresses uh, as DHCP in DHCP server the pool of that pool of IP address will service the LAN which is connected through the interface which has the same network address as the pool of IP addresses in the DHCP server. Now, after we're done, after we're done, we're going to do something. So from host one now, I need to check connectivity. So the first thing we have to do is to check local connectivity. For example, from host one, I should be able to ping host two. And we know host two, the IP address is 172.16.0.2. So now it is successful. Now. One thing when you do it when you deal with routing, ping is, is okay, but you can always try working with the other tools. For example, if uh, I can see that there is reachability between host one and host two, now let's see reachability between host one and host three. They are, they are on different lands, so host three should be normally 1.1. One one, okay, this is uh, what we have seen before. Okay, let me just. Uh, yeah, it's, it's working. Now, since they're going through a router, it's safer to use a trace route. So when I use a trace route, I can see ex if exactly the traffic is correct. So if it's going through a router, yes. So here it seems that it's going through default gateway, 172.16.0.100, and then it goes to the target, which is 172.16.1.1, uh, which is in fact host uh, three. Uh, so trace route is very useful uh, whenever you uh, communicate with a device on a different LAN. So you can see if this device, if the traffic is going through your default gateway uh, or what are the routers the traffic is flowing through in order to reach the destination. So now everything is fine. So we can also check the uh, host 4, reachability with host 4. Let's say I trace route to 172, I trace route to 172.16.1.2, uh, sorry. Dot two, yes, so everything is fine. So uh, this go, it goes through the default gateway, and then it reached the uh, host uh, four on the uh, second on the second LAN. Now, what about from host one? I want to ping from host one. I want to ping the server. So we know the server has the following IP address: 172.16.3.1. So it's already configured, and uh, from host one. I want to ping, let me just uh, bring this to here or here, like this to be visible. Uh, I will ping 172.16.3.1. So what do you think? Destination host is reachable. It means that the traffic is being sent to default gateway, but the router does not know how to reach this destination 172.16.3.0. It does not know that. Say That's why uh, RT1, your default gateway, says that destination host is reachable. Is reachable. So is this true? Now let's go to R1. Does R1 know how to reach segment or network 172.16.3.0? Let's check its routing table. Show IP route. Okay, we don't have such information available in routing table. That's why now it's very important to configure our routing table. So in RT1, it's very simple. Since we are going to use a static route, so here we are using static route, I go to the global configuration mode, and then I will say the following, IP route, any packet received by RT1 and packet sent to network 172.16.3.0 with subnet mask 255.255.255.0 this packet should be forwarded through the, the, the local interface should exit through the local interface which is um, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 2 0 slash 2 so here I'm specifying uh, the local interface of the same router where I'm configuring the static route okay so um, so we can do something like this there's no problem uh, here is displaying this message but of course we expect this to be a point-to-point -point link 
Uh, here I've, I've used the local area network. It's there's no issue with the, with the, with that. So let's just go and check again the, uh, the static route. Okay, or let's just display the static entry in our routing table. So it shows that if you want to reach network 172.16.3.0/24. Okay, so in this case. You have to send it through the through the gigabit Ethernet through the local uh, gigabit interface zero slash two. Now let's go to RT two. Uh, RT two, <coughs> of course, we we don't have also the same information as before. There is no information about how to uh, reach these networks one seventy two sixteen zero and one seventy two sixteen dot one. So I will just configure the static routes IP route, and then put the first network address uh, zero zero subnet mask. So here I'm telling the router if you want to reach this network, if you are RT two RT two receive packet to this LAN here, just forward it to the next hop IP address, which is one seventy two. Uh, 16.2.1 okay I can use this next hop instead of using the local interface the exit interface I can use the next hop IP address which is 172.16.2.1 so I can do something like this and of course I have to teach RT2 about how to reach the other LAN which is 172.16.1.0 so I can do something like this and here RT2 whenever it receives a packet whose destination is this network here you just simply forward it to the next hop ip address 172.16.2.1 which is the ip address of rt1 now of course after that rt1 will be in charge of forwarding the packet to the right destination so after we have done that let's check our routing table okay now we have these two static routes and they describe exactly what we want so now we populated our routing table correctly now let's go to host one and from host one i would like to ping to the server now let's see what happens so now uh, it needs some time okay so it shows the, the timeout okay but after that it works correctly so this is normal situation okay and uh, from host two also from host two i can ping the server which is on 172.16.3.1 okay which is web server right okay so the same story here uh, from host uh, 3 from host 3 I can also ping the server 172.16.3.1 uh, okay so it works also it works fine and from host 4 also we can do the same thing, pinging the web server 172.16.3.1, and everything works fine. Well. Of course, as I told you, whenever you deal with internet networks, uh, you can use ping to check reachability, but it's more efficient if you trace route to know exactly uh, through which router your packets are going, especially if you intend to control the path. So now you see the packet that you are sending from host 4, in order for it to reach the server 172.16.3.1, it should cross the default gateway 172.16.1.100 then the second router 172.16.2.2 finally reach the destination it means that in order for a packet sent from host 4 to reach the server that packet should cross two routers the default gateway router the second router which is rt2 and finally the destination so that, so like this you can check exactly uh, the path through which your packets are flowing to reach the target so in this example what we have seen basically uh, we have seen how to configure a DHCP server on a Cisco router by configuring two pools each pool will service one LAN we have seen also how each pool will map to a LAN a specific LAN uh, also we have learned how to configure a static route uh, by uh, by using a local interface a local interface as exit interface and also by using the next hop IP address in order to forward the packet to reach the destination. I hope this video was uh, useful. Thank you for listening.